Now let's turn to Europe, to the country of North Macedonia. This is a country in the Balkans, home to less than 2 million people. It's a multi-ethnic, multi-religious nation. And it has just voted against the European Union. Not directly, though. It wasn't some EU referendum. The people of North Macedonia just voted in internal elections. The country went to polls yesterday. Macedonians voted for a new president and parliament. And the results are out. They show the direction the country is headed in. Here are the winners. I'm happy, even though I don't know what it means yet. I don't know what it feels like to be a president. But I do know that I'll do everything I can to defend the interests of the nation. This is North Macedonia's new president-elect, the first woman to get elected to the post. But president is a ceremonial position in the country. Much like in India, the real power is held by the country's prime minister. In North Macedonia, it's likely to be this man. Macedonia is free and Macedonia will be eternal. Everyone who thought they could ruin Macedonia, cause it harm and humiliation, will be held responsible and end up in a landfill. That's the leader of the winning party, Ristian Mikoski. He might be the country's next prime minister. His victory speech was quite combative, and that is his style. That's one of the reasons he got elected. And that's also the reason that his detractors are afraid, afraid of what will happen to North Macedonia's EU bid. I expect nothing, nothing at all. Why? Because they will send us back. Instead of going forward toward the European Union, we will head back. The country has been trying to get into the EU for decades. It became an EU candidate in 2005, but negotiations did not begin until 2022. And why is that? Because the country has had problems with its neighbours. Existing EU members like Greece and Bulgaria. Both countries have vetoed North Macedonia's EU membership in the past. Let's look at the Greek issue first. Up until 2019, North Macedonia was called the Republic of Macedonia. Some of you may have heard that name, Macedonia. It was the homeland of a Greek legend, Alexander the Great. Macedonia was once a Greek kingdom. It gave birth to Alexander's transcontinental empire. Now the thing is, ancient Macedonia is not really related to North Macedonia. The Macedonians of today are not Greek. So Greece accused this country of using a misleading name and vetoed its EU membership. The naming dispute took decades to resolve. It only ended in 2019 with a name change. But North Macedonia's election-winning party wants to go back to the old name. We saved ourselves. We are no longer North, but Macedonia, loud and clear. The issue of Bulgaria is again about names and recognition. The Macedonian and Bulgarian languages are related. They have common roots, but North Macedonia had refused to recognize this. So Bulgaria vetoed its EU membership. The issue is being resolved, but the new Macedonian government might resume hostilities with Bulgaria, which basically means a pause to, all, to an already slow process. But that is what North Macedonia voted for, so it seems most of the people there are now Eurosceptics. It's another division cropping up in Europe. It shows the waning power and promise of the EU. A few years ago, EU membership was coveted. Countries were willing to bury the hatchet to become members of the European Union. Century-old issues were swept under the carpet, all to join the exclusive EU club. But now the situation has changed. Joining the EU is not that appealing anymore. People are voting for Eurosceptics, even in member countries. Hungary's Viktor Orban, the Italian coalition led by Giorgia Meloni, they all promised to put their own country first ahead of the European Union. These are the leaders winning power, often at the expense of European unity. Does this mean the golden age of the EU is over? The next few European elections will be telling. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison LaGrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections to climate change, 
to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.